Welcome back. Today I'm visiting my favorite local airplane model shop. Hey Elliot. Hey Sam. Welcome to Gemini Jets headquarters. I picked out a few really good models that I think they're your personal favorites because I'm pretty sure you've flown probably on every one of these planes. This is a very special 100th anniversary plane with lovely detail. I know this one's very special to you because you're one of the few people that actually has flown non-stop from London to Sydney. And here we have a Dreamlifter. This is an interesting plane. This, this is used by Boeing to transport fuselage parts of their new aircraft. We we've, we've even have the detail where the tail opens and closes. It's it's magnetic so it, it gives a nice closed seal. This is really really cool. And all your wheels are rollable as well, right? Yep. Turn this so we're not. Oh, you can even turn the gears. Yep. Wow. Engine fan blades spin also if you blow in them, the engine fan blades spin. The next aircraft we've picked is the Thai Royal Barge. Um, the details on this model, as you can see, we, we've taken a lot of time to, to represent the boat accurately. And one of our best selling models is the Emirates A380. It's displayed in the special Expo livery. The Expo liveries come in a blue livery, an orange livery, and a green livery. Uh, after that is, a, is the famous 747-8, operated by Lufthansa. And the next one is the British Airways 747-400, featured in the Landor livery. This model also has our special setup that includes flaps down configuration, full span leading edge flaps, full span trailing edge flaps that are triple slotted to represent an actual 747's landing configuration. Sometimes I often sit here, if you look at my British Airways video, 14 kilo, and I can look straight into these Rolls Royce engine and then seeing the leading slats extend down for landing configuration. This is as real as you can get. For your viewers, uh, Gemini Jets would like to give away uh, three KLM 747 models. Uh, this is for the retirement at the end of this month of the KLM 747. We're going to give away one to a one 200 scale 747 diecast model, a 400 scale version in a collector's box. This is all diecast. And we're going to give away a third model, which is the cargo version of the KLM 747-400. Well, I just want to let everyone know, I knew Elliot for a long time. I've been a Gemini jet collector from day one. This airplane, as you can see, the United 747-400 Battleship Gray was one of their very first Gemini Jets model in 1998. That is and correct, Sam. We, we started with four models. It was this one. There were two Virgin Atlantic 747-400s, mm -hmm. and we did an Air China 747-400. That's right, the worst seller ever. Worst seller ever, but it's sold out now. So, Sam, one of the advantages of coming to the Gemini Jets headquarters is it's actually like a museum. We have every single model on display, both in 1 to 400 scale and 1 to 200 scale, that we have ever produced. So anybody that is a collector of this stuff that comes in and sees this is absolutely wowed by the fact that they can see every single Gemini Jets model we've ever produced. My personal favorite actually is a Northwest 747-400. And the main reason for that is when I started this business, I was back and forth overseas, back and forth to Asia from the US on a Northwest 747, both a 200 and a 400. So this one's got a little personal favorite in my heart. Talk about Northwest, I also remember this model you made. This is the 50th anniversary of Northwest. It's called a World Plane. They have all their major Pacific uh, cities um, painted on the fuselage. Yep, it was an interesting model. This was actually the fifth Gemini jet we produced. So we move on to the center cabinet that's got a lot of historical planes. Actually, me personally, I like the historical planes better. Uh, but we do have to cater to a world market, and a lot of our collectors are younger folks. They're not as interested as much in the, in the historical planes. So that's why we do a lot of current stuff, but we also do some of the more historical ones. One of my personal favor favorites is this Dominicana 707. I actually flew on this exact plane between Miami and Puerto Plata in the Dominican Republic. This was back, I believe, in the early 80s. 
And we even did some special livery aircraft. Uh, this was the Concorde that was leased from British Airways to Singapore Airlines. So on one side, it's British Airways. And then on the other side, it's Singapore Airlines. And the real aircraft was actually uh, painted this way. Look at this. This is the Brendif, right? This is Brendif Calder. Yep. That's the Calder artist. It was a famous artist commissioned by Braniff. He painted a DC-862, which is in your hand. And he also painted a uh, 727-200. So the thing is, um, you look at this engine cowling here, they got a little, uh, like a horse kind of animal on it. Uh, very creative, very creative uh, paint scheme, really. Very little, little uh, Saab and ATR, and also like uh, Lockheed Electra, you got, uh, you know, all sort of DC-6, DC-7, YS-11. You made all the props? Yes, we did, Sam. Wow, you look know, at this one. Th th this, this, these cabinets are almost like an aviation museum, not just for Gemini jets, but we've tried to represent as many airframes that actually flew over the years. And they go, we go back over 50, 60 years in history in these cabinets. Sam, aside from the passenger planes, we even make Russian cargo planes. This is the AN-124 Ruslan. Yeah, uh, I owned that one too. Yep, you were pretty fortunate to do that because not many people could fly on a Volga Dnieper AN-124 Ruslan. <laughs> so Sam, over on this side of the store, we have the 1200 Museum Collection. Um, over here is a lot of 737s and 777s. One of my personal favorites is this Alaska More to Love. This was not an easy livery to, to replicate. It's a fade from a, from a, a red into a very dark blue. Yeah, that's amazing, the gradient on that scheme. We really focus on the, the various liveries of an airline like Alaska. This is a special salmon plane. It's an actual fish painted on the entire aircraft. The standard livery here, this was a Boeing special edition to support uh, Alaska Airlines support of Boeing. Uh, retro planes for American, we have the uh, Mindawarji version of the Qantas 737. Okay, so some of our more interesting liveries are the Icelandair Special Edition planes. These were very difficult to do, also similar to the uh, More to Love in the Alaska. A lot of work goes into the printing of these. This is all computer generated and printed. Um, the base the base colors are all sprayed on by hand, but the actual intricate liveries are done by computer. This is a classic 747-100 that was flown by American Airlines back wow, in the 70s. Wow, this is unbelievable. Look at that color. Yep. Look at the chrome on the American 747. Yep. Wow. It's actually polished metal. Polished metal. You know, back in the 60s and 70s, a lot of airlines operated their aircraft in, in, a, in a bare polished metal livery. Sadly, uh, even though this was widely accepted and loved by everyone, today's modern airlines use a lot more composite, uh, which of course is not metal. So we've lost all the looks of the polished metal planes. Oh, it's called Euro White. Yes. Wow, look at this. The Emirates A380 with uh, the animal United for Wildlife. By the way, your model's really heavy. Like this is really heavy. You can even do like a dumbbell and flexing your muscle and practicing on your model. How heavy these models are? Let me check them out. Wow, 3.8 pound for this 200 scale 380. That's a lot of weight. It's definitely not a plastic model. No, Sam, it's not. That's the advantage of having a die cast model. It gives you value. You know why I collect your model is because I've flown on lots of these planes. I can personally relate to these models. I want to ask you this. You produce limited editions on all the models. So Everything. once they sold out, does the value goes up over time? Yeah, the value will go up because once we we run the production, that's it. It is not reproduced. It is a one-time production. So it guarantees that the model will not be available from the manufacturer anymore. So over time, Sam, what people will do is they'll put these models on eBay. And you can see a gradual increase in the value of these models as the years go on. Because once they're produced, they are technically discontinued. So once they're discontinued, the value does go up on them. So Sam, in addition to the models, we're making accessories, including a full airport terminal, air bridges, mats, and everything to give the collector a full display. The terminals actually light up. Oh, and wow. There's actually power inside your terminal. Wow, look at that. Wow, very cool. So Elliot, which airport does this represent? Well, I mean, I took cues from airports all around the world. It really doesn't represent one given airport.
but uh, the collector can use their imagination as to what airport they want to make it. We have a night effect look with the terminal lighting all up. It really it gives you an impressive look of what the airport looks like in the evening. Wow. There's even an A380 gate, upper deck bridge. Yes, That's there amazing. Is. You know, it cheers me up a lot when I come to the model shop because this is why I love aviation and collecting die-cast model. It really brings good energy out during a difficult time like this, right, Elliot? I totally agree. Uh, collectors enjoy turning to their hobbies in times of uh, stress, and we're hoping to keep everybody happy with the models. Sam, welcome to the Gemini Jets warehouse, which is also in Las Vegas. Um, similar to a Costco or a Sam's Club, we have similar racks that they do, but instead of toilet paper and cleaning supplies, we have Gemini Jets models. Ah, these are models inside, airplane models. Yes, all airplane models, nothing but airplane models. How many models you think you have in this warehouse? Jeff? Well, we've got, we normally have about two to $2.5 million worth of inventory, but with the Chinese New Year and production slowdowns due to the coronavirus, we're, we're, our warehouse is much thinner than it normally is. Like these racks normally are completely packed. Floor area is usually packed with pallets, models stacked even in the, in the, in the aisles here. Um, we should be probably in the next two months, we'll be back up to full production at that time. And the racks will be full again, the floor will be filled up. And we try to keep things so real here at Gemini Jets. We even use real aircraft stands to get up to our higher parts of the shelves. These, this exact same type of equipment when people are working on a 737 aircraft type. So Alia, there are boxes and boxes going up all the level to the roof. How many airplane models do you think you have in your warehouse? I figure we, Sam, we probably got about 15 and 25,000 models in stock right now. 15 to 25,000 airplane models in this warehouse. That's insane. Yep. That tells you how many collectors out there are collecting these diecast models. That's incredible. I would like to think myself is one of the biggest airplane model collector out there. I've been collecting since the late 90s. I'm sure that many of you, like me, you have a lot and lots of airplane collections. At the end of the video, I'm wondering, are you already an airplane model collector? If so, what is your favorite airplane model? Share with us in the comments below. Thank you for watching.